Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Nikia Anani, and I will be discussing on foolproofing the future of your family enterprise. This is a pre recording, as unfortunately I am not available for the live conference. However, I do believe that this will be very useful for you. Should you have any queries, questions, comments, feel free to contact me directly so we can have a conversation. So I'll start off with a story um, to highlight why this is important. Why is it important that we foolproof the future of your family enterprise? A few years ago, a friend of mine's father died prematurely. He had a terminal illness that killed him within six months. My friend was in her mid twenties at the time and was obviously devastated beyond having to grieve the loss of her father who she was so close to. She was in a precarious situation where the fa family's financial security was wiped. Her father had been the breadwinner and no one really understood how to run the family business. In addition, his assets were not very well protected and people claiming to be his children surfaced an alleged ownership to his properties, leading to a legal battle. My friend, she was the oldest in the family. Luckily, she was financially independent, but her two younger sisters were in the UK at the time, they were in university. And so herself and her mom now had to shoulder the heavy financial burden of paying for their international school fees. Her reality changed overnight. Going through that, watching my friend deal with both grief and anxiety for her future at the same time, it pained me dreadfully. And I'm guessing you might know a version of that story as it is so prevalent on the African continent. The business was not able to withstand the death of the founder, a scarily common phenomenon this side of the world where only 2% of Nigerian family businesses will make it past generation one compared to 33% globally. The irony is that my friend's dad's death was my awakening. It was my wake up call. To want to see more, to want to see more resilient family enterprises on the African continent. A resilient family enterprise, it will not collapse as a result of death, incapacitation, economic shocks, change in regulation or technology. It may be thrown off course for a little while and may have to course correct. However, it will withstand whatever adversity it faces. So today that's what we'll be talking about is how can we foolproof the future of your family enterprise? A lot of what I will share with you are lessons learned through my personal journey as a business owner through both triumphs and trials. Why is this important? Protection from poverty. I'm from Lagos, Nigeria, and unfortunately, Nigeria is the poverty capital of the world, now with over 88 million people living on less than a dollar a day, with over 50% youth unemployment rate. And so, you know, degrees, academic degrees are no guarantee of financial security or earning power. Beyond robbing one of financial capacity, poverty also has a mental impact. It robs one of one's mind. It robs one of one's time. It robs one of one's dignity. It's important that we're able to empower ourselves to free ourselves from this plague of poverty that is such a reality on the African soil. We lack a safety net. We don't have a social safety welfare system unlike Europe or North America. This is our safety net, our family businesses. We can ensure that our family businesses become generational wealth machines, generating wealth that ensures that our next generation have food, shelter, education, access to capital to start their own businesses, which will be their sources of livelihood. So it's really important that we create wealth and protect wealth that becomes a safety net for the future generations to come and that we train the next generation so that they are also able to create wealth themselves. 
Second reason is to leave a legacy. So beyond promoting multi-generational success, it's really about who is Africa and does the world really know who she is, right? I remember watching Chimamanda Adichie's speech on TED Talks years ago when I was in university, and it was titled The Danger of the Single Story. And it really resonated with me. It resonated strongly with me. The world does not know Africa's views on so many arena of life, and it is our responsibility to showcase who we are by exporting our ideas, our culture, entertainment, good and services to the global stage. Family businesses, I believe, are a great vehicle to do that. Also, not only exporting across space, ex passing down across time. Family businesses are really good at passing down family values, which speak to, this is who we are, and this is how we do things. And these are passed from generation to generation. So our businesses can become vehicles to both export to the global stage and pass down from generation to generation, our culture, our legacy, our heritage. The third reason why this is important is that affluence creates access. Wealth opens doors. It is an enabler to making an impact on a global stage. I believe that we are a global village and we have to think on a global scale. So protection from poverty is one reason why we should care, but more importantly, giving your children, your grandchildren, a starting point to soar. That's the ultimate goal. You know the common saying, may the ceiling of this generation be the floor of the next. That's our aspiration. And with creating an enabling environment for that so that next gens have privilege, they can use their access, their knowledge, their financial capital to make a positive impact on the world in a world that so desperately needs leaders in action. Who am I? <laughs> I'm a family business in insider. I'm sure um, you might be wondering more about me. I live and breathe family business. So the story is that my parents started off our first business in the family the year I was born. And so entrepreneurship has always been in my life, all my life. I relocated to the UK um, at the age of nine. So I went to university in London. I worked in corporate for a few years, but found myself coming back to Nigeria to discover myself. I then worked in my father's businesses for the, going on 10 years now. <laughs> Rose through the ranks as a next gen. Um, and along that journey, decided to start helping and working with other families, bridging the gap between generations and family firms through succession planning so that we can build resilient family enterprises that will withstand the test of time. I'm also a co-founder of African Family Firms, which is a non-profit community of business owners across Africa and the diaspora. So, I've taken you very high in the sky and sold you a dream. And a lot of you might be like, Nikia is just, uh, she's an idealist. She's not on this planet. She doesn't know what the realities are that we face. I do know, I'm a business owner myself. Like I said, I also face these issues. In this hour, we're facing a need to diver diversify urgently, but we are in a completely disrupted world. COVID-19 is a storm that has had a really disruptive effect. And a lot of us have seen declining revenues, profits, cash flows. And it's like a ship that has capsized in the face of a violent storm. And initially the focus was let's come to surface, let's just survive. But now over time, our focus is getting back on course to ensure that we're moving towards the destination of multi-generational success. But in trying to drive towards this destination, we may encounter debris in the water, forcing us to consider alternative routes. We are looking to diversify the family business urgently, considering other products and services, platforms and paradigms to identify new opportunities that are viable in this changed world. So we arrive at our destination of financial security. But the trouble is, the world is so fast moving. A week is like a month. 
a month is like a year. And this high level of uncertainty makes it difficult to pinpoint opportunities and to plan to pursue these accordingly. Not only have our businesses been disrupted, but our lifestyles have been disrupted such that we are time poor, overwhelmed, distracted. So we don't give sufficient time and attention to truly diversifying. Charles Darwin is quoted to have said, it is not the strongest of species that survives. It is not the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is the most adaptable to change. And change we must to survive in these turbulent times. We may see where we want the family business to go, but unsure precisely how to get there. It's one thing to identify a strategy. It's another thing to implement such that we see impact. It can be a challenge to get staff who may be used to doing the things in an old way to adapt. How do we lead remotely, ensuring that we're maintaining culture? But we need everyone to get it so we can implement this and see an impact. Transformation is hard. Reinvention requires transformation of self and also transformation of a business, which requires leadership. The old leadership comes from an old English word, meaning going before as a guide. And as a leader, not only are you going before your organization as a guide, you're also going before yourself as a guide, persuading yourself, keeping yourself accountable so you can navigate the ship of your business. But we must reinvent if we want to leave a transformational legacy. A legacy that means not only financial security for your family, but also leads to a transformed world. Thank you so much. If you'd like to get in touch, you may find out more, inf more information on me on my website, www.nikiaanani.com. There, my email address is there, my social media, my podcast. Um, I appreciate it. we've gone through a lot of content and you might have some questions. So thank you.